Uh, good morning, everyone. Oh, that's not good enough. You're all half asleep. Good morning, everyone. That's far better. Can I welcome you this morning uh, to our CE service? And we want to, first of all, welcome our CE members. Okay, to stand up where you are. Come on, let's see it and let everyone see it. Turn around so everyone can see your pretty faces. And uh, we want to welcome Mark Hawthorne. I couldn't find him there for a minute, but he's sitting beside the big fella. So, uh, uh, Mark, lovely to have you here. I'll let you stand up later because you're taller than me. So, uh, and we want to welcome anyone who's visiting with us, moms and dads, grannies and granddads, and friends of our Christian endeavor. And uh, we just are really looking forward to this morning's service and to the boys and girls as they'll take part and as they will lead us through worship this morning. Can I please uh, remind you of a couple of things that are already within our bulletin sheet. Uh, this evening we will not have an evening service here in Greystone Road, rather we are joining with the whole of the Presbytery at Muckamore Presbyterian Church at 7pm. This is the BMI Celebration of Mission, Praise and Worship service and this evening the Reverend Keith McCrory and members of Maynooth uh, Presbyterian congregation will be joining with us. Uh, this is a very fitting evening to do this, as uh, uh, also later on this evening, uh, there is a special series beginning on BBC Two at 9 p.m. entitled An Independent People, and uh, I think that service should be over by 9 o'clock so that you can get home uh, to watch that. This is a three-program series looking at the origins of the Presbyterian Church uh, in Ireland. And I'm sure uh, even if you've seen the trailers, you will maybe recognize a few of the old faces that you might see uh, pop up. And if you missed tonight's program, for whatever reason, uh, I'm sure it will be available on the iPlayer. Just a couple of, of other things. Communicant classes sign-up sheet is available in the vestibule. Please sign up. If you're wanting to start those classes, which will be starting after the morning service next Sunday morning. Next Sunday morning will be the beginning of our full membership classes. Uh, just to remind our Kirk session that they will be meeting on Tuesday night at half past seven. Uh, Kirk session Tuesday night at half past seven. Also, we've been getting some uh, complaints about uh, cars parked and blocking in. Uh, and blocking out uh, the primary school across the road. We're not uh, allowed to park or, or uh, uh, take up that entrance, even though the school is closed. And also on the slip road into uh, our car park, uh, then uh, we would ask people to refrain from uh, parking on the slip road, especially near the steps uh, leading to uh, the church. There's major problems of cars trying to come on in off the main thoroughfare, uh, and also the possibility, therefore, of accidents of, of cars uh, not being able to stop uh, uh, as other cars are trying to enter the car park. We would encourage people um, uh, to use specified car parking spaces uh, if you possibly can. And if there aren't any here, then there should be uh, plenty over uh, in front of the spa at this time of the morning. Wonderful problem to have, isn't it? Not enough car parking spaces. So we're going to have to look at this. It's wonderful. So, uh, uh, but please bear that in mind in the days to come. Okay, so we have a piece of wood with some silver on it. And I think it's a plaque. And we want to congratulate this morning the boys in our Anchor Boys section who won the Antrim and District Battalion. It's a knockout competition yesterday morning. <laughs> so we won it last year, and we won it the year before, <laughs> and we won it the year before that. And I don't see 2008. Did we win it that year too, Mark? No, <laughs> only four years in a row, <laughs> dear, dear, dear. So our boys came first and second and fifth. 
So I don't know if they're going to close this competition down because we're just too good for the rest. But wonderful boys, can we thank you just for all the work that you did in preparation for that and thank our officers and indeed the officers of our battalion too for putting on these competition for our boys. So these are all the announcements and uh, I'm going to hand over to Rachel who's going to lead our service. and thank you for coming. This morning is your chance to find out what we have been doing at CE during the year. I will now hand over to Lauren for the opening prayer. Opportunity to come and worship you today. Please help everyone who will take part in our CE service. Help us all to learn and to learn more about you. Amen. a song which we have written called Junior C Style. Oh, <laughs> 
We will all now stand to sing our first praise, Jesus' love is very wonderful. Commandments. Chloe will now lead us in a quiz to test her memory of the Ten Commandments. How well do you know the Ten Commandments? On the screen, you will see jumbled up versions of some of the Ten Commandments. Your task is to try and unscramble the words and find out what it should say and tell me which commandment it is. The first one is on the screen now. What should it say and which commandment is this? Lauren. Yeah. The next one is on the screen now. What should it say and which commandment is this? It's for anyone in the congregation as well. You shall have no other gods but me. Yeah. The next one is on the screen now. What should it say and which commandment is this? Honour your father and mother. It's the fifth. The last one is on the screen now. What should it say and which commandment is this? Zoe. You shall not give false test against your neighbour. <laughs> well done to everyone, and we hoped we dropped this jog to remember. All the members of CA will now come to the front to recite the Ten Commandments. Yeah. 
members of CE will sing some of the songs we have been learning this year. bring our annual report. Just before I report on what's been happening at CE over the past 12 months, could I just add a word of welcome to Mark um, Hawthorne. Mark has been with us in Greystone um, in the past, and we're very much looking forward to hearing what uh, you have to say to us this morning. I know the boys and girls particularly are. Um, so thank you again, Mark, for, for coming this morning. After many years of faithful service as leader in charge, Lorna Warwick left the CE last year. Lorna was a great inspiration to the leaders and to the boys and girls, and we all benefited very much from her gracious ways, her patience week by week, because it's needed sometimes in CE, and her depth of knowledge of God's word. Um, we would really like to take this opportunity this morning to formally thank you, Lorna, who I can't see at the moment. 
over there, <laughs> uh, for your guidance and leadership over the years at CE. We miss you on a Thursday night, and, and we wish you every blessing in your future service for the Lord here. With a smaller core team of CE leaders this year, we greatly appreciated the assistance of a number of other helpers and visiting speakers. I'm not sure if they were volunteers or conscripts, particularly one of them, as you'll, you'll know from the list. Um, but it included Colin McKnight, David McGee, Paul McMullen, John McLean, and Norman Winnie, each of which played a different role, um, whether it be stories or uh, presenting uh, or just helping with the games or the parties. Um, we need all of, all of that help. So I think that the boys and girls particularly enjoyed having more men involved in CE this year for a change, and we really couldn't have managed this year without them. So thank you all for your help. And I would also like to thank Pauline and Miriam for your continued faithful service each week at CE. Your dedication, week by week, in helping to prepare the programs for the children is very much appreciated. This year, our attendance at CE averaged 15 children per week, and the teaching program here concentrated on the Ten Commandments, the books of the New Testament, and the armor of God. We have really been blessed this year with a, th a really enthusiastic group of boys and girls. They take part each week with great commitment, their energy, creativity, and their willingness to take part all through the year has been truly amazing and is a great source of encouragement to us. They are really literally bursting with excitement to take on jobs. It is a privilege to be part of it, and we have really experienced God's help and blessing throughout this year. The Christian Endeavour has a very important role to play in the life of our church. It's wonderful to see the children growing in their understanding of the Word of God, and we hope and pray that the work of CE will be of lasting benefit to them as they progress into their teenage years and into adult life. And finally, thank you to everybody here who has supported and prayed for the CE faithfully throughout the past year and in years prior to that. We really value your prayers and your donations as well to the CE as we rely upon God each week for this very important work. The list offering today will also go towards the ongoing work of the CE as we continue to seek to glorify God in all that we do. Thank you very much again. Your offering will now be received.
we pray. Now, special day today as well as being Sunday. What special day is today, Adam? Mother's Day. I hope you got breakfast in bed this morning and your dinner's being made for you and the fire's already set, ready for you to curl up in front of this afternoon. Um, a wonderful day today. And just in our prayers of thanks for the offering, we want to give thanks for mummies too. Let's pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for the privilege of being able to worship you this morning in freedom. Thank you that we can gather in this place of warmth and lift the name of Jesus high. Thank you that giving of our wealth that we have is a part of our worship. And we just thank you for the privilege we have of giving to you. Lord, we thank you for moms today. Thank you for what they give us and what they bring to our families and the central role they play within our lives every single day. Father God, we just celebrate motherhood today. Thank you for them. And may they know your blessing and be pampered greatly today. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This year, we have been learning about the sword of the Spirit, the Bible. We have learned most of the books of the New Testament, and Kyle is now going to lead us in some sword drill to find out how well you know your Bible. We have been learning the books of the New Testament. This year at sea, we have been learning the books of the New Testament and we have been learning about the armour of God. We have learnt that the sword is our Bible, so some nights at sea we do Bible sword drills. We want everyone in church this morning to have a go at doing sword drill. We will start with Bibles closed and then on a signal I will tell you what verse or word is to be searched for. The winner is the first to stand up and give the answer correctly. It's for everyone in the congregation. <laughs> Shield your sword. Draw your sword. Has everybody got your Bibles? Everybody in the congregation, if there's one in front of you? You can shout it out nice and loud. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Shout it out loud. Again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. What? Stand up. Kathy? Yeah. Where are we now, Darren? Oh, just the next one. Shield your sword again. Shield your sword. Draw your sword. Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. Oh, there's uh, Claire. Claire. Oh. Well done. Yeah. Things we do in each of the following verses, I'm wanting one word which describes something we do. Galatians, read that again. Okay. things we do in each of the following verses, I'm wanting one word which describes something we do. Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. Shield your sword. Shield your sword. Draw your sword. Draw your sword. Right. Okay, go again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. No electronic aversions accepted. <laughs> Stand up. Chloe. Chloe. Stand up, Chloe. Yeah. Running, well done. Tell them to draw their swords this time. Okay. 
Shield your sword, draw your sword. Joshua 6, verse 20. Jocelyn. Shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet and the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, so every man charged in and they took the city. Something that we do. Shout! Yeah. As today is Mother's Day, I'm wanting the name of the mother referred to in the verse. Yield your sword, no shield your sword. Draw your sword. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. Melanie. Melanie. Read the first hand. Read the first hand, the mother. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Shield your sword. Draw your sword. Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. There's Mark, have it. Hi. Mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Katie. Shield your sword. Draw your sword. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. Members of CA will now lead us in our prayers for others. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for what we learnt about you this year in CA. Thank you for the opportunity that we have had to learn about the Ten Commandments and the armour of God. Thank you for the fun we have had each week for being with us. Thank you, Jesus, for the work of the Leprosy Mission who help people who have from this horrible disease. Help us to remember that you healed people with leprosy when you were on earth. Thank you that doctors have been able to find medicine to help the people with leprosy. Thank you for Sam Smith who spoke to us in CEU and be with him in his work. Dear Lord, thank you for the work of Tear Fund which helps poor people in their in the other countries. Help us always to be thankful for all that we have. Thank you for clean water to drink and food f f and for food to eat. Thank you for the work of Norman Mulwini who spoke to us in CE and be with him in his work for you. Thank you for our church and the chance to learn more about you. Please be with our minister and all the organisations who teach people about you. Thank you that Mark is here today and help us listen well. He teaches us more about you. Amen. We will all now stand to sing It's a Song of Praise.
Mark Horfarm will now come to speak to us all. Okay, are there any other boys and girls who want to come up to the front? If you want to, come now. There's plenty of space. Come ahead. I have to say, <clears throat> whenever Johnny stood up at the start, I thought very briefly it was Rafa Benitez. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then I seen him lift up that trophy and I thought it's definitely not Rafa Benitez. <laughs> definitely not, because that won't be happening for him. But it's lovely to see you all, boys and girls. I'm going to borrow this in a second. <clears throat> so, it's great to be with you. I think CE style is possibly the greatest thing I've ever seen happen in a church, boys and girls. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing, except for we, were, we really wanted to dance, to be honest with you. <laughs> Ian and I were like, oh, sitting there, but it was good. So, I'm uh, really, really glad to be here this morning, boys and girls, and I want to talk to you about one of the commandments that you've been learning about, okay? Uh, and it's the first commandment. There it is. We can see it up on the screen from Exodus chapter, 10, uh, Exodus chapter 20, where it says about not having any other gods apart from our God, not putting anyone before our God. And I was uh, thinking about what to do this morning. There's a little story about one of the characters in the Bible that I've been telling in schools recently, and I thought, this is perfect for this morning and it's about a king and I wonder put your hands up if you fancy being a king or queen you think it'd be a nice thing to to have to do yeah any of the grown-ups think it would be a good thing <laughs> they have all too much sense they know how much hard work it is well the king I want to tell you about this morning boys and girls is a very very special king and his name is King Josiah has anyone ever heard of him before a few people have, okay. He's in the Bible, and there's something really, really special about King Josiah. And that's the fact that King Josiah wasn't that old whenever he became king. In fact, the Bible tells us that he was only eight years old whenever he became king. Now, is there anybody who is eight here this morning? Okay, I want the eight-year-olds to have a think. If you became king right now, or queen, what would you do? Come up with one rule that you would have if you were king or queen, okay? Let's see. Is the blue microphone? Okay, what would you do? No work in school, but still go to school. Okay, no work in school, but still go to school just for fun, to see your friends. I like it. Okay. Okay, I think you better tell them that. Make all the teachers do the work. Make all the teachers do the work. Now. Teachers would tell you they do a lot of work anyway, but they're only joking with you. Okay, anyone else, what rules would you come up with? You don't have to be eight, okay? If you're, no matter what you are, if you're a kid, what would you come up with if you became king or queen? Okay, we'll go over here. Let's find out. Still go to school, but don't do homework. No homework, okay. That's, that sounds pretty good. Let's go over here. No school. No school at all. We're really, we're real anti-school this morning. Okay, let's see. See One Direction every night. Oh, see One Direction every... Were you there recently? You've got your lanyard on and everything. Were they good? Harry's such a dreamboat, isn't he? Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> what, would, what would you do? Free sweets. Free sweets? You can be my king. I'm with you. Shake my hand. What's your name? Sam. All hail King Sam. <laughs> who gives the free sweets. What about over here? What would you do? Give everyone a free holiday. A free holiday? Right, that's beating the sweets. That is, that is quite fair. And we'll take, we'll take one more, yes. What would you do? No maths. No maths. I think we'd all agree no maths would be a good idea. But I, like, it's so hard to imagine what it would be like to become king at eight years old and to have all that power, okay? And the, I want to tell you a bit about what King Josiah did whenever he became king because... I think whenever we think about being a king or a queen and having that responsibility and having that power, we always think about things that would make us happy. 
So, given I'd freeze, you make me happy. I don't need this anymore, do you? Or going on holiday, or having no school. That would be great for us. But the thing about Josiah is, the thing that makes him special is that whenever he became king, he didn't do things to kind of make himself happy. He didn't do things to make himself powerful or he didn't do things to make himself look good. He did things that put God first and not himself first. And I want to have a look at some of those things that he did. So one of the first things that he did, boys and girls, is the temple, or as we would call it, the church, the place that people went to worship God. Before Josiah was king, they had let it go to ruin. Can you imagine if you were driving past this street and you looked in and the church was just in ruin? There were bricks falling down. No one would go anymore. And that was what had happened. So King Josiah decided, right, I'm going to rebuild the temple. I'm going to repair the church. And while, while he sent men to do that, they found something very, very special. They found God's word. They found what we would call the Bible now. But it was in a big scroll. And they took it to Josiah. The people who were working in the temple took it to Josiah and they read it out to him. And do you know what the Bible says happened? The Bible says that whenever Josiah heard what it said in God's word, he tore his clothes. Now, how often does that happen here in Greystone? Has that ever happened on a, on, on a Sunday morning? Not. No, it's probably a good thing, to be honest. I think that's quite safe. But boys and girls, can you imagine if we heard the Bible and we were so upset with what it said and so sad that we didn't do what it said that we actually tore our clothes with anger. And that's what happened to Josiah. Whenever he heard the Bible, he realized we haven't been doing what this says. We haven't been following God's law. It says there, you see at the very, very bottom of the screen, it says, we have not been doing everything it says we must do. And boys and girls, sometimes whenever we hear the Bible and we hear what God wants us to do, and we realize we're not doing it, we kind of shrug our shoulders and we go, well, I could maybe do that some other day. Or, okay, it's okay. It, you know, I only have to think about this one day a week. But that's a not a good enough response to God's word. Josiah was emotional. He knew this made a big, big difference in his life. He knew it was important that whenever he opened up God's word and he seen what it said, he knew it was important that we actually follow that and we actually do that. So there's the first thing we can learn about how to put God first is that God's word is important. And whenever we open it up, whenever we look at the Bible and we find out what we should be doing, we can't just shrug our shoulders and go, well, that's maybe good for someone else. We have to say to ourselves, we need to be doing that. We need to be doing what the Bible says. So Josiah did that. He looked at God's word and then it tells us he did something amazing. It says that he pledged to obey God's word. He pledged to obey this with all his heart and soul. You can read it up there. He pledged to obey the Lord by keeping all his commands, laws and decrees with all his heart and soul. And boys and girls, that's a really, really great reminder of how much we need to give God. We can't just give him a part of our life. We can't just give him a Sunday or maybe when we're at CE and then kind of forget about him whenever we're at school. But Josiah gave his whole life, his whole heart, his whole soul over to God so that he could try his best to do what God wanted him to do. So that's the second thing that we can learn, that we can't just give, our, give God a tiny part of our life. We have to give him our whole life, every single bit of it, our whole heart and our whole soul. And that's how we put God first, by saying, God, we give everything over to you. The third thing he did, boys and girls, was, and you've already talked about this in one of your commandments, you talked about having no other idols before God. And the people in those days had built lots of idols and they went and worshiped those idols instead of worshiping God. But Josiah said, right, no more. I want all those idols taken down 
and I want the people who lead them and worship in the idols, I want you to get rid of them. And the things that were distracting people from God, Josiah said, out they go. And that's probably one of the most important things that we can learn from Josiah, is that whatever is distracting us from God, whatever is taking our attention away from God, we need to set those things aside. And it might be different for you, boys and girls. It might be maybe you get home and maybe at night time, instead of spending some time with God, you maybe want to watch the TV a bit. Or maybe for the grown-ups, maybe they're more worried about their work or more worried about the house and having it look nice. There's lots of things that we can get distracted by God. And that happens to me as well. I get home sometimes and I could be spending time with God, but instead I switch on the computer and I play football manager, and I take Notts County to Premiership Glory, if you can believe that, folks. <laughs> but that's what happens. I get distracted, and I could be spending time with God and sp instead of doing that on the computer, which doesn't really make a difference. So that's a great thing we can learn from Josiah. Whatever distracts us from God, we need to set that aside and get rid of it so we can focus on Him. And the last thing, boys and girls, the last thing I want to tell you is that this celebration called the Passover that God's people in those times had, they hadn't done it in a long time. They'd forgotten all about it. So Josiah said, right, we're going to do it again. You can see it up there. He said, you must celebrate the Passover to the Lord, your God, as required in this book of the covenant. The people had forgot to say thank you to God. They had forgot to celebrate what God has done for them. And that, boys and girls, is really important. That's why going to CE is important, because you learn the amazing things God has done. That's why coming to church is important, because you get a chance to celebrate and sing praises to God. You get a chance to find out all the amazing things that God has done. So I hope you keep going along to CE. I hope you keep going along to church. It's amazing to look out here, boys and girls, and see this church completely packed. It's absolutely fantastic. And I hope that as you grow older, you will keep coming to church and keep celebrating what God has done because that's a really, really important thing in having him as number one. You could sum up Josiah really easily by saying this. King Josiah put God first. He didn't do anything that put him first. He didn't do anything that made himself powerful or look good. Whenever he became king, he did things that put God first. He opened up his word. He committed with all his heart, with all his soul. He got rid of all the distractions that made him look away from God. And he took time to celebrate God. And boys and girls, I hope that there's maybe one of those things that you could learn from this morning. Maybe you don't look at your Bible enough. Maybe there are things that are distracting you from God. Maybe sometimes you think, hmm, I'm not so sure about going to church on a Sunday morning when actually Josiah shows us it's really important to celebrate God. And if there was just one of those things you could remember and think, I'm going to try my best to do that, then that will help us put God... Where did that first go? Did I flick on from it? Disappeared there. That will help us put God first in our life. And do you know what the best bit is? This is what the Bible says about King Josiah. And I think this tells us how good a job he did of putting God first. The Bible says this. It says, Never before had there been a king like Josiah who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses. And there has never been a king like him since. He was the very, very best king because he knew that he had to put God first. And we don't have to be a king to do that. If I put God first, then I'm the very, very best mark that I can be. And if you put God first, you're the very, very best you can be. And I hope that that little story of Josiah will help you remember some ways that you can put God first in your life. So let's say a little prayer, and we'll thank God for that story, and we'll ask him to help us do that, putting him first in our lives. Father God, we thank you uh, for this morning. We thank you for the chance to celebrate what the CE have been doing, what the CE have been learning. And we thank you for that great commandment that we can have no other gods before you. We thank you for the example of Josiah. 
We thank you that whenever he opened up your word, whenever he seen what you ask of us, he tore his clothes with anger because he realized that they had not been obeying your ways, God. And I pray that you will help us whenever we open up your word to do the same. Not take it lightly, but take it seriously. Father, I thank you for his example of putting aside any distractions that take away from you. God, help us to do that, whatever it might be on our life. Help us set those aside so we can focus on you. And help us enjoy being a community that celebrate what you have done for us, that sing praises to your name. God, help us put you first in our lives. And I thank you that when we do that, we become the very, very best person that we can be. In your son's name I pray. Amen. You all really enjoyed that. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, I think you can all stay at the front, maybe, as we sing our final praise this morning. Um, and if you just want to stand where you are and you can turn and face the, the screen, the words will be up there, okay? It's the song we sang earlier on, and we're all going to sing it now as a congregation. Father God, you love me, and you know me inside out. To, to Mark, uh, just for his challenge and his encouragement. Please stay for a cup of tea or coffee in our main hall, if you can, uh, for a bit of fellowship. And uh, let's just close in a word of prayer. Father God, thank you that you're a God who loves us and perseveres with us, a God that we know through your precious word loves us and loves us because you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus. And Father, as we bring our time together, we ask for your blessing upon us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.